Hello, during this lecture I will talk about the cardiac arrest in hypothermia. I have based my lecture on the ERC 2021 guidelines and also Wilderness Medical Society guidelines of 2019. So if you would like to go through those guidelines, I would I recommend it. Um, so first of all, if you get a call to unconscious patient and you suspect hypothermia, you should go uh, and treat the patient according to the accidental hypothermia algorithm. And we will go through the right side of the algorithm, which is dedicated to cardiac arrest patient. First of all, when you suspect hypothermia and the patient is unconscious, You've got not 10 seconds, but 60 seconds, one minute, to assess if the patient is in cardiac arrest or not. And to decide if the patient is in cardiac arrest, uh, please use not only the clinical examination, such as checking the pulse, breathing and movement, which might be difficult in hypothermic patient because the skin is quite rigid and the pulse is not so easy to palpate. Use also the ECG monitoring, anti-tidal CO2, so capnography after securing the airways and the ultrasound of the heart. Mm, so as I said, it's difficult to assess if there is a pulse or not. So if you uh, monitor the cardiac rhythm uh, through the puddles uh, and you've got ventricular tachy tachycardia, pulseless, ventricular fibrillation or asystole, you should start CPR, so chest compressions and ventilation. When on the ECG you've got cardiac rhythm with organized QRS complexes, it might be pulseless electrical activity all electrical activity with some with uh, with a pause or or some kind of perfusion and to find out if there is any any circulation uh, it's recommended to use capnography to look if there is any wave if there is lack of wave which suggests no perfusion to the lungs no exchange of co2 and 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 oxygen uh, then you've got a confirmation that it's, that it's uh, that this is PEA and you should start CPR. Another additional option is you, to use ultrasound and to check if there are any heart contractions which correspond to ECG rhythm, to QRS complexes on ECG. If you've got contractions, then start CPR. Remember that some patients may still have minimal vital signs at very low core temperature, like below 24. So remember, you've got those at least 60 seconds to get yourself sure if there's cardiac arrest or not. Um, on ultrasound, for example, when there's no cardiac arrest, uh, the heart activity is present and it usually will be low frequency, so bradycardia. You can see it on the left side. You can see the contractility of the heart. Uh, when it comes to cardiac arrest and hypothermia on ultrasound, you won't see any heart activity, no contractions. You see it on the right side, there are no contractions of the left ventricle. When it comes to capnography, because of the low perfusion, low heart rate, uh, if the wave will be present, it won't be normal wave like in normal thermic patient. The, the values of as anti co 2 will be low around, around 20 millimeters of mercurium and it will be rare because of the bradypnea so you can see on the left side if there's cardiac arrest there won't be any wave on, on capnography which you can see on the right side of, the, of this slide so when should we withhold or term, terminate, terminate CPR? Uh, for sure, when you've got obvious signs of irre irreversible death, so 
when it comes to trauma patients, you will have decapitation, truncal disc transection, whole body decomposed. But specifically for the hypothermia or suspicion of the hypothermia, if there will be whole body frozen solid, so when you will have the patient with the chest wall which will not be compre compressible, that would be the the fact to to tell you to to terminate CPR. Of course, when you get valid DNR order, or if you get conditions very unsafe for a rescuer, you should think about withholding or termination CPR. And also, when you've got patient with the low core temperature, but with the high suspicion that the cooling appeared after cardiac arrests. So, if you've got high suspicion that there was another cause of the cardiac arrest, and then the body temperature decreased. As it is, for example, in the situation where you get avalanche burial over 60 minutes, over one hour, and the area is packed with snow, and you've got assistly on the monitor. That would suggest that the patient first had a cardiac arrest due to asphyxia, and then his, the body cooled, which is very poor, poor prognosis, and there's unlikely that the patient will survive. So in such cases, you, you should terminate CPR. Uh, so as fast as possible when you would start CPR, you should assess core temperature which will help you to, to decide about the therapy during the cardiac arrest. And the best option is low reading thermo thermometer uh, inserted to esophagus, so esophageal probe which you can insert through the uh, with with the um, nasogastric tube or through the intubation tube which will be inserted in the esophagus. Or you can use tracheal tube or supraglottic device with the esophageal channel. So here you've got the picture of the patient who has uh, uh, this yellow ending is the, uh, the ending of the nasogastric tube with the with the uh, te uh, temperature probe inserted. And, uh, and here we've got the, te the thermo thermo thermometer. Uh, the deeply hypothermic person may appear dead, might, have, might be rigid, might have pupils dilated, not reactive. But if the hypothermia is primary cause of the cardiac arrest, such patients may still survive with CPR. So according to, to the data, uh, the lowest temperature with successful resuscitation and rewarming when it comes to accident and hypothermia was 11, let's say almost 12 de degrees of the core temperature. So remember that there is no cut-off temperature for resuscitation of the patients with the primary hypothermic cause of the cardiac arrest. And why it is so? Why patients, hypothermic patients in cardiac arrest, so patients that have are in cardiac arrest due to hypothermia, why they have good chances of the good neurological recovery? It is because uh, mm, when the temperature drops, core temperature drops, the oxygen demand also decreases around six, seven percent per one. Per one a degree of Celsius of, of cooling of the core temperature. And at the core temperature of 28 degrees, the body oxygen consumption is the 50% of normal consumption. And at that temperature, the brain consumption is 35% of the normal oxygen consumption. So, uh, large decrease of the metabolism and increased time of the brain survival. So hypothermia protects brain and heart against hypoxic damage. And, uh, mm, and according to, uh, to the scientific data, when the cardiac arrest was witnessed, and it was due to hypothermia, the survival to hospital discharge rate was over 70%. So witness hypothermic cardiac arrest, so more than 70%, 
survived to hospital discharge. And almost near to 90% of such patients had, had a favorable outcome. So it's not a common situation in other causes of the cardiac arrest. If the cardiac arrest was unwitnessed, but the patient was hypothermic, still the survival rate was almost 30%. And those that survived had, had a very high neurological intact outcome. And, uh, mm, and what seems promising, and you should remember it, the first rhythm in almost 50% of those that survived was acystoline. So acystoline in the primary hypothermic cause of the cardiac arrest is not uh, as bad prognosis as, as in other cardiac arrests. Uh, when you would start CPR, measure the temperature, and one of your main concerns should be to gather the information about the mechanism of the accident. Was it really hypothermia as a primary cause or not? So you should exclude cardiac arrest from alternative cause prior to cooling. And according to, this, to, to the data, uh, the primary hypothermia is unlikely cause of the cardiac arrest if the core temperature is more than 28 degrees. There were very few patients that had cardiac arrest due to hypothermia at the temperatures over 28 degrees. So this 28 degrees is some kind of threshold. So if the patient has cardiac arrest and the temperature is over 28 degrees, it's not likely that the hypothermia is, is this mechanism of, of, of cardiac arrest. What are the special features of CPR in hypothermia? How do we defibrillate? How do we give epinephrine? How do we compress? So when it comes to chest compressions and ventilation rate, it's the same as in normal thermic patients. So normal standard advanced life support algorithm. When it comes to the defibrillation, when the core temperature is below 30 degrees, uh, we give, sh and it's shock rhythm, we give shocks with the maximum energy, but if after three shocks there is no, no reaction, we withhold those shocks till the, com the core temperature will be uh, equal over 30 degrees. And over 30 degrees, we start the standard protocol of the defibrillations every, uh, um, every two minutes of CPR. When it comes to epinephrine, when the corporate core temperature is below 30 degrees, we do not give epinephrine. When it's over 30 degrees, we give epinephrine, but we prolong the intervals. We double the intervals. So no, not every three, five minutes, but every six to 10 minutes. So not every, uh, every, two, uh, every, every two loops, but every four loops of CPR. When the temperature is over or equal to 35, we, we give uh, epinephrine every three to five minutes. We, we do the standard protocol. So those are the sp special features of the CPR and hypothermia. And uh, usually uh, we found we find hypothermic patients cardiac arrest uh, outside, and we shouldn't delay the transport. So when we've got a hypothermic patient in cardiac arrest, uh, we should uh, head directly to to the center where, which can provide extra corporal life support for rewarming. And we should provide CPR during the transfer and use the mechanical compression device to make it easier. Uh, when we've got hypothermic patient with cardiac arrest with the core temperature below 28 degrees, and we do not have the, uh, the device for the mechanical compressions, and the rescue is difficult, uh, we can delay CPR uh, or we can provide intermittent CPR. So, few minutes of CPR, few minutes of the transport, few minutes of CPR, few minutes of the transport. 
And there is algorithm in the ERC guidelines which says that when the core temperature is below 28, uh, we can perform five minutes of CPR and then five minutes of without CPR, so five minutes of transport. When, when we've got confirmed core temperature below 20 degrees, uh, we can perform five minutes of CPR and we can have 10 minutes without CPR uh, for the transportation. And uh, survival probability of the hypothermic cardiac arrest depends on the core temperature, uh, the mechanism of hypothermia induction, the duration of CPR, the gender if it's female or male, if the cardiac arrest is witness or unwitness, the first cardiac arrest rhythm, if there's trauma, and what's the serum potassium. Uh, but still remember that uh, even in unwitnessed cardiac arrest with asystole, if the hypothermia was a primary cause of the cardiac arrest, there's no contra contraindication for the extracorporeal life support we warming. And when the patient will arrive to hospital, uh, before starting extracorporeal life support, uh, the prognostication of successful rewarming can be performed using the HOPE score, which you can check on the website, which is provided here. Uh, and it's better to use this HOPE score than traditional in hospital serum potassium prognostication, which is less, less re reliable. And uh, HOPE score, so hypothermia outcome prediction after extracorporeal life support roaming for hypothermic arrested patients, um, will tell us about the survival probability from 0 to 100% chance of survival to discharge. And the cutoff is 10%. If the HOPE is below 10%, uh, the extracorporeal life support shouldn't be shouldn't be um, administered to the patient and we should think about the termination of the of the um, of the CPR so uh, the hope depends on the age of the patient so if the patient is younger it's has better survival probability the the gender the females have the better survival probability uh, if there was a asphyx asphyxia together with hypothermia, if yes, of course, it's worse uh, chance of survival. The CPR duration, if it's shorter before extra corporal life support, it's better. The ser serum potassium level, if it's lower, it's better. Core temperature, if it's lower, it's better because lower temperatures suggest that the hypothermia was the primary cause of the cardiac arrest. And here you've got an example of the, uh, let's say, patient, 25 years old, with the potassium of five millimole per, per liter, with the CPR before ACLS of 60 minutes. So when the core temperature is 24, uh, when, whenever, if it's 24 or 30 degrees core temperature, uh, the survival possibility with, with cardiac arrest without asphyxia is much higher than with asphyxia, as you can see. Uh, when it comes to the gender, uh, males have lower survival probability in all of those cases. When it comes to the core temperature, if it's lower, 24 degrees core temperature, the survival probability is higher than when you've got higher temperature. Um, that would suggest that it's not a hypothermia that was the cause of the cardiac arrest. Uh, so, Extracorporeal life support rewarming in the hospital, uh, preferable should be performed with the extra corporal member oxygenation, so ECMO, over the cardiopulmonary bypass. And the optimal speed of rewarming of extracorporeal life support still has to be established. Uh, different scientific works suggest different speeds of, uh, uh, of rewarming. When the patient would arrive to the hospital when there is no possible extracorporeal life support, extracorporeal rewarming, then non ACLS rewarming should be initiated, uh, especially 
if this extracorporeal life support center cannot be reached within uh, within hours, let's say six hours. A um, few words about the avalanche rescue. Here you've got the algorithm done by the ERC uh, Council. Um, so most most common cause of the cardiac arrest of the avalanche uh, victims is hypoxia. Most of those victims die from asphyxia or trauma connected with the uh, with the avalanche. Uh, so when you've got the avalanche victim and unwitnessed cardiac arrest, it, there's poor chance of survival. Uh, as hypoxia is the main cause of the cardiac arrest and avalanche uh, victims, we should start CPR from five rescue breaths and uh, and with the, when there is return of spontaneous circulation after a few minutes of CPR, it's a good prognosis that would suggest that it was short time of uh, uh, asphyxia or hypoxia. Um, and the time of burial is, is quite important. If it's below 60 minutes, there is uh, unlikely that the patient will have cardiac arrest due to hypothermia. So if it's below 60 minutes, we should manage the patients like normal thermic patients because there's small risk of hypothermia. So standard CPR should be performed at least for 20 minutes, according to the guidelines. If the burial is over 60 minutes, there's it's higher chance that the hypothermia is the cause of the cardiac arrest. But when you've got obstructed airways, like airways packed with snow, um, then we should consider CPR to be futile, futile because probably asphyxia with the cause of the cardiac arrest and 60, more, than, more than 60 minutes of asphyxia, it's almost equal to death. So uh, low probability of survival after 60 minutes. But when the burial is over 60 minutes and the errors are clear, not obstructive, and there are no signs of uh, unsurvivable injury, then we should treat this patient as the cardiac arrest due to hypothermia and we should undertake full resuscitative measures uh, with the transport to the extracorporeal life support rewarming. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, please uh, email me. Thank you very much.